Welcome back to Roy Knows Podcast, helping you become a better and more informed you. Well, today we're going to talk about some new innovations in managing um, and minimizing post-op care and recovery, and also really um, beyond fillers and, and really how to truly naturally rejuvenate the skin. And I'm joined by David, David Ware, who's been a nurse practitioner for eight years or longer, and he's an amazing teacher, and he's really on the cutting edge of technique and technology. So David, welcome. Yeah, thank welcome. you for having me. Good. So tell us the difference between PRF, PRP, and then the new RESS PDGF. Yes, that's a um, that's a that's a loaded question. So, <laughs> a good one. Uh, it's a good question. It's a great question, and I love the question because I love how in the aesthetic space, um, our understanding of anti aging and the technologies that we use continue to advance. Right. So when I first came back into aesthetics, PRP was my game. I use right. PRP every single day. We right. studied PRP. Yeah. I've had fantastic results with PRP for hair, face topical, um, sexual rejuvenation. I mean, Everything. we've had some fantastic results with PRP. You're using it in your surgical cases. A couple of my favorite PRP brands that we've been using are, of course, Insight and Progen. Right. Um, those are my two brands that we use because I like higher yield quantities, and they have much larger tubes. We could do anywhere from a 30 to a 60 to 120 ml blood draw to get a higher concentration right. of PRP because we know for PRP, uh, we need a higher concentration to get better results. Um, with PRP, platelet-rich plasma is a short-term, immediate burst of growth factors, right. specifically VEGF or vasculoendothelial growth factor, and then uh, platelet-derived growth factor. That's activating the wound healing cascade, helping with your neocollagenesis, and helping thick the skin and help uh, thickening the skin, and help with your anti-aging and as well as increased healing times. Right. So PRP is where I started, and I love PRP, and I still use it every day in practice. So I'm not getting rid of PRP, but there has been an evolution of the right. things that we do in our office with <laughs> this type of technology. So next up came PRF. Right. So PRF is platelet-rich fibrin. Um, the nice thing about platelet-rich fibrin is that there is no anticoagulant in it, so you right. get a more stabilized matrix of fibrin added to your platelet-rich plasma that stabilizes those release of growth factors over a longer period of time. We're talking maybe five to 14 days versus 24 to 48 hours. Okay? Right. So there are some applications that I think they're better for, such as sexual wellness. I think right. it's better there. Um, uh, but for like a scalp rejuvenation and skin rejuvenation, topically, I think PRP is better. So mm -hmm. I want that immediate burst of growth factors because those we're typically uh, are activating it with a, a, a wound like microneedling or um, intradermal injections, whatnot. So with PRF, after PRF came, uh, we came up with EasyGel or BioGel, which is taking the platelet poor plasma, heating it up to about 65 degrees centigrade over uh, about 10 minutes and causing that albumin to coagulate. Okay. And when you, that albumin coagulates, you can then mix it back with your platelet rich fibrin and create a biofiller. So uh, a, a, a long term, or longer term, term, sustainable release of growth factors that adds volumization at the same time. Yep. And right now the trend in aesthetics is bio rejuvenation and biostimulation, right? Right. So I've been doing a lot of biogel and easy gel in the practice on patients who are not wanting to go down the hyaluronic acid pathway yeah. or they're not wanting to go down the CAHA or PLLA or PMMA pathway. Right. So uh, that's been a really nice game changer in our practice for yep. patients that want, you know, that volume. And station. also tear troughs. Works I mean, I send you all tear my tear troughs. Yeah, because it's hydrophobic. I mean, it's hydrophobic. You're not running into that filler swelling, you're getting increased yeah. skin thickness because right. of that, thir that uh, growth factor release over time. I agree. You get the temporary revolumization. You typically have to do, you know, two to four sessions to get it to last about a year. But it um, looks natural. But, but it looks natural. And one session will last you about three months, maybe four right. months. But if you compound the sessions and work synergistically, um, uh, most of my patients will do about two to four sessions until we get the correction we want and then annual maintenance from there. Right. So great product. Okay. Yep. 
So then we have another evolution. Yes. Okay. And this one, this one's new. This is we've been playing with this just this year. So yep. This is Ari Essence from Lynch Regenerative Medicine. Fantastic product. Yep. Um, what they did, and what a lot of companies, or a couple companies that we work with, have understood that this platelet-derived growth factor yep. is the key to what we really want to harness in aesthetic medicine, as far as increasing uh, uh, or decreasing the healing time, increasing the healing capacity, right. and working synergistically to get better outcomes. Okay. Right. So um, Samuel Lynch is the creator of this product. It has several patents. It's been treated, used to treat over 5 million patients. It yeah, has orthopedic healing. indications, yeah. oral maxillofacial uh, surgery indication, indications, uh, oral surgery indications, yep. uh, wound healing indications. So it's just new to the aesthetic space, but it's been around for quite some right. time. And the science is... And the yeah. science is sound. It's yep. sound. Yep. So what they did with PDGF is they came up with this recumbent DNA technology. So they were able to isolate the amino acid sequence that codes in our DNA for platelet-derived growth factor. I know. Okay. Once they isolated it, they mixed it with rice and yeast, okay, and grew it like beer. I don't know if you ever made beer, but I didn't know how they made beer until he told me this. Yeah. So I had to Google YouTube, <laughs> YouTube how to make beer. And basically it caused this platelet-derived growth factor to replicate exponentially in the lab with no mRNA or DNA component to it. So it is just strictly straight platelet derived growth factor. I know. And because they were able to re replicate it synthetically, they can make it extremely potent. So right. the platelet derived growth factor that's found in half a cc in one of these little guys, I'll open it up. A box comes with five and then some sterile hyaluronic acid. But in one of these tiny little guys, of half a cc is 300,000 times more platelet-derived growth factor than I can get from a blood draw. <laughs> I know, it's a game changer. Like, it really is. insane, yeah, insane. It is insane. So as far as what we've been using PRP for, PRF for, you know, assisting that wound healing cascade, working synergistically with the wound healing cascade to get better outcomes and decrease healing times, this PDGF, is stronger than anything that we can get oh, from the oh, human body. And it's very specific. Yeah. It's very specific to the wound healing cascade. There are some caveats to that though. So it has to have a wound healing cascade activation to work. Right. So I use it with our ablative lasers. You're using it in your surgical cases. Yep. I like it with microneedling. Um, I would not apply this topically if you aren't injuring the skin. Makes no sense. Right. I would not apply it for a non-ablative laser, like a Moxie. There's right. no there's no thermal energy to right. activate that right. wound healing cascade, so it wouldn't make sense to use it for that. Right. But if you're activating the wound healing cascade with an injury, chemical pills, surgery, lasers, lasers. etc., it works amazing. Then it works amazing, and it significantly will decrease your downtime. Now, in the aesthetic space, it's not approved as an injectable. Okay, it's only approved as a yep. topical. However. It is approved as an injectable in other areas of medicine. So I would consider this an off-label use in aesthetics if you do decide to inject it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're injecting it, you have to realize it is 300,000 times stronger than what you're used to if you're using PRP. So sometimes that's great. <laughs> you have to blend and, and it. And yeah. sometimes you need to make sure you dilute it down a little bit, or you might have too much of an effect. Right. Uh, and the biggest, I mean, the biggest adverse event I've had with it is on myself, uh, and that's when I did my tear troughs with it straight out of the vial, <laughs> and I didn't dilute it, and my tear troughs were swollen for about four months or for about four weeks. Four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. So you had I, I was a little puppy. It was mega like PDG. I, yeah, I had mega PDGF. So I mean, you live and learn. That's how we learn things in medicine. Medicine, you know, yeah. Um, um, but I mean, I think this is a game-changing product, and I mean, uh, we're going through God, 50 syringes a month now. I mean, we're using it quite frequently. Yeah. Uh, our patients are loving it, topically with their microneedling, topically post ablative laser. I've been injecting it in scalps and tear troughs, mixing it with PRP and PRF to um, uh, actually uh, yeah. um, exponentially increase that its efficacy. Um, the nice thing is, is that with PRP and PRF even though I still stand behind them firmly because they have sound evidence behind them and it's well supported in the literature and some of the aesthetic uses that we use it for. 
the PDGF does not take the person's overall health status into consideration. And with PRP, PRF, it does. Yeah. It does. So if I have a younger, healthy patient that I use PRP or PRF on for, they're going to get great results. If I have a mature patient, let's say in their 80s, that's diabetic and a smoker. Yeah, that's not going to be good. Do using their PRP or PRF is pointless. Like it, it, it would <laughs> yeah, make no difference. It, is. Like it would be pointless, it right? Is. It is. Um, so now I have a cool new tool belt in my, uh, that are a new tool in my tool belt uh, to use on some of my more mature patients or my patients that are less healthy, um, that I can give them more similar results to what a younger, healthier person is yeah. that has more viral type, uh, higher amounts of PRP and PRF in their bloodstream. Yep, no, I agree. And I use it in all my facelifts now. I mean, it's fantastic. It's, it's very, very potent. Yeah. And yeah. then I'll put a little bit on the laser in the no. perioral area. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. And if I'm using it, if we're using it uh, uh, as an injectable or uh, um, under the skin, uh, we're mixing it with saline. Yep. Okay. Um, if you want to use it topically, they uh, they have a proprietary uh, hyaluronic acid, sterile hyaluronic acid uh, um, uh, that comes with the kit that you can uh, blend it with. So for topical use. For, for yeah. topical use, yeah. uh, which is what I'm doing post laser, post microneedle. Right. Yeah, no, it's great. Wow, amazing, mm -hmm. amazing new techniques and technology. It's it's really, it's the shift to bioengineered natural stimulators for enhancing rejuvenation of the skin and beyond. Yeah. So thank you, David. Um, uh, so stay tuned. If, if you want to learn more, just, you know, shout out to us on our social media or on this YouTube channel, and then I'll send those to David. But it's amazing, David. Very, very well uh, done. And this is true science-based. Uh, techniques and technology that's going to be a game changer in facial rejuvenation. So till next time, stay informed and stay educated.